Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Scott Drennan. I, I know the first session after lunch is always challenging. Hopefully, I'll uh, keep at least some of you awake. But uh, uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, how to use Neutron to combine workloads from uh, SRIOV, Ironic, and DPDK to provide uh, seamless high performance networking across those workloads. Uh, which you'd think would be trivial, but turns out it isn't. So, uh, getting started, uh, what I'm going to talk about first of all is why is this an issue in the first place, and then uh, talk about uh, the topology that we're, we're working through, and uh, a couple of different approaches that, that we considered for this, and then uh, demo what we did, and uh, finally, once the demo is over, talk about uh, what the next steps are, uh, both uh, on our side and within the, within the broader OpenStack project. So first of all, what are, what are we trying to do? We've got uh, some OpenStack workloads, which they have networking requirements, but they don't really care about high performance networking. They don't really care about. Uh, high rates of small packets, they don't really care about uh, 40 gig throughput, uh, any of this sort of thing. But there are some that do. And there are a bunch of different ways to achieve this. And depending on the workload, uh, each workload may choose, uh, choose different ways. Some workloads may still need to be bare metal, but you want to manage them through, through OpenStack. Some workloads may be uh, I uh, mandate using an SRIOV uh, virtual, virtual function, in which case uh, they need uh, a, a direct, uh, a direct network, uh, network attachment. And uh, some workloads are using DPDK uh, so that they can use virtual networking, uh, but uh, maybe using DPDK in the workload itself, maybe and a uh, huge page connection into a DPDK on the hypervisor may just may want to be using DPDK as a, as a hypervisor a, a networking stack. And like I said, you'd think this would be easy, but it turns out that it is actually fairly difficult to get uh, all of these working together and playing nicely together in this sort of a heterogeneous environment and let them talk to each other. Easy enough if you uh, have uh, your bare metal workloads over here and your uh, SRIV workloads over here and your DPDK workloads over there, and you go out to the edge of your data center uh, in order to connect between them. And for, some case, and, and for some use cases, that's okay. But if you actually want uh, all of these things operating in the same uh, router or better yet, in the same network uh, within, within Neutron, that, that's kind of tricky. So um, what are we talking about here? We've got uh, your standard uh, class fabric using VXLAN uh, with uh, some Tor switches, some uh, uh, core switches, and we've got uh, uh, SRIOV uh, and or DPDK workloads that are using VLANs or uh, VXLAN to get out. We've got ironic workloads that are connected into the top of rack uh, using ports and VLANs. And then we've got traditional VMs that are using uh, VXLAN. So what that means in Neutron is you've got multiple segmentation types in a common network topology. So just to provide a bit of background, uh, SRIOV uh, is fairly common for uh, high performance workloads uh, that aren't yet DPDK enabled, uh, and you want to have flexible networking for them. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with SRIOV, it's a mechanism where you're basically sharing the physical NIC. You're not providing uh, a virtual NIC. It looks like a physical NIC into the into the VM, and it's called a virtual function. And but uh, uh, to the VM, it looks like uh, an actual physical NIC. Uh, 
with uh, a PCI address and all of that sort of good stuff rather than uh, your standard VertIO or, or vHost. Uh, SRIOV has been part of OpenStack for a long time, but uh, it uh, uh, assumes a provider network model, which assumes consistent VLAN to network mappings, and it assumes that those mappings are, are pre-provisioned. And we'll talk more about that. For Ironic, uh, Ironic is used for bare metal workloads in OpenStack. Uh, as of Mitaka, all bare metal uh, workloads in the uh, uh, standard release uh, must be on the same network. That's been a, a, a pain point for a, a couple of releases now. Uh, we showed something proprietary back in, uh, in Kilo in Vancouver uh, showing how to do this and uh, been uh, watching and uh, trying to help this uh, get in. Newton uh, is, is now looking like it's really going to happen uh, for one VLAN. Uh, per bare metal, and uh, if the uh, VLAN aware VMs spec also gets uh, gets merged, then we may even be able to do multiple VLANs, which would be really really nice. Uh, but again, bare metals, uh, you want to have them on multiple networks, and you want to have them on the same networks as your SRIOV workloads uh, in, in some instances. For DPDK, I in most cases, if you're using DPDK, you're looking to do more sophisticated networking in the hypervisor itself. Uh, SRIOV and Ironic uh, present, uh, in most cases, a, a very basic networking model. Um, that's for things like uh, NSH and uh, security rules in the, uh, in the hypervisor managed by the uh, uh, DPDK driver. And, uh, uh, in, that ca in this case, uh, we're looking at VXLAN between the uh, compute host and the Tor. So what that means is yet another uh, binding model. So what do we need to do? Uh, from a configuration perspective, we need to be able to map uh, VLANs to overlay VXLANs in every rack locally and dynamically. We need to align the SRIOV and Ironic work, workflows because those are very, very similar. Uh, we need to be able to connect uh, DPDK compute uh, workloads into the, same, into the same network. And from a performance perspective, you're caring about performance. So you don't want to have uh, a network node sitting there performing your routing between networks for you. So you need something that will uh, actually do uh, routing between networks at wire speed uh, the same way as uh, uh, you could, so that you're not, uh, you're, you're not losing uh, any performance that you've gained by doing all of this work with the SRIOV and uh, DPDK. So what does that mean? Uh, on the top of rack switch, uh, you need some way to tell uh, the top of rack switch, that this port belongs to uh, this hypervisor so that you're provisioning the right things on the right switches. And you need, obviously, uh, VLANs to match between the, the top of rack and the hypervisor. If they don't, then things don't work. And you want to be able to permit a mix of uh, VLAN and VXLAN. So that's sort of setting the stage for uh, what we need to do. There's an obvious. OK, maybe not obvious. Uh, a fairly obvious uh, 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 approach to this uh, that has existed for a couple of releases now in terms of ML2 port binding. Uh, hierarchical port binding uh, is, at least apparently, uh, designed to do precisely this, uh, designed to I uh, have a VLAN mapping between your compute node and your top of rack, and a VXLAN mapping between your top of rack and the rest of your uh, data center fabric. Uh, unfortunately, there are a few limitations with that. Uh, there's uh, some limitations around uh, static segment creation. Uh, with the way that SRIOV does its binding, uh, there's no way to pass uh, uh, the segment around the same way that you do 
uh, well, not, not really, sorry, that's not, not the segment. There's no way to pass the top of rack port around the same way that you do in Ironic. Uh, and uh, you, can't, uh, you can't do dynamic segment creation. So uh, that's probably an approach for future, uh, but the approach that we've taken today uh, is uh, to align the uh, SRIOV uh, configuration with the way that Ironic is doing things. And Ironic provides local link information on the port binding. Uh, and uh, I'll, sh I'll show you that a little bit later, where SRIOV doesn't. Uh, SRIOV, if you try and provide local link information on the binding profile, the, the SRIOV driver actually overwrites it with all of its uh, PCI stuff. So that's, that's not helpful. So two approaches. One is to update uh, Nova SRIOV to allow local link information. That would require patching Nova. Or uh, the uh, cheaper and easier approach is uh, uh, within your plugin, uh, do the port to hypervisor mapping in Neutron so that you can get that back even though it's not being passed around between Nova and Neutron. So that's, that's what we've got today. Uh, in future, with the work that's going on around VLAN, VLAN aware VMs, uh, with luck, this will, uh, this will become simpler. Uh, and VLAN aware VMs, for those who aren't familiar with it, is uh, a way to expose multiple VLANs to a workload. Uh, originally, that was, per the name, a VLAN workload, but uh, uh, we, our, some of our participation in that was to make sure that it applied uh, to uh, non-VM, uh, Ironic, and uh, uh, SRIOV, which I guess SRIOV is, is VM, but uh, uh, non-traditional non VM cases. So. Uh, we're going to be doing some work over the next cycle to turn that into uh, code, and hopefully it'll, it'll land in Newton. So uh, enough of uh, me talking and showing slides. What does this actually look like? And uh, this will take a moment or two because, oh, and I suppose it would be good if I actually started at the beginning of the demo. Uh, it takes a moment or two for the screen to recalibrate. Excellent. Um, and rather than uh, excite you all with uh, watching a, uh, an ironic uh, instance boot for five minutes, I've recorded this such that uh, uh, we don't actually have to uh, watch paint dry. So a uh, standard Horizon dashboard. Uh, we've got three hypervisors. We've got uh, one for SRIOV and traditional VMs, one for DPDK. And then we've got uh, an ironic bare metal node. This is sort of the minimum viable, minimum viable demo. Uh, and we, we're starting out with no instances. We're starting out with uh, two networks, uh, a tenant network and an ironic provisioning network. And uh, for those not that familiar with, uh, with ironic, the ironic provisioning network is a, is a mandatory component to allow the uh, VMs to get their uh, images over a secure channel before the bare metal workload is handed off to a tenant. You don't really want uh, your tenants able to uh, go and uh, download images from an image server or uh, uh, go and harass other, other people's uh, uh, instances. So that separation is good. So here we can see that we've got an Ironic node that is uh, powered off and available. Uh, and we'll shortly be able to see that we've uh, got a grand total of one port with, uh, with the MAC address. And, uh, and I'm doing a port show. And what you can see here is, uh, well, first of all, that I'm using a, a micro version of Ironic because the, uh, the client needs, is using an older, older version, but uh, is we've got a local link connection with uh, switch information, uh, port IDs, switch IDs, so that uh, Neutron can figure out what attachments it needs to make in order to uh, uh, 
correctly configure that, uh, that bare metal instance. Oh, and here's me highlighting it. That's very exciting. So switching back over here, uh, again, rather than configuring a whole bunch of stuff manually, uh, we're going to use heat to provision all of these VMs. And uh, we'll launch a uh, creatively named demo uh, stack here. Uh, and that uh, is a pretty standard, pretty standard stack. All we're doing is launching four VMs into uh, one, inst uh, one uh, network instance. We've got a bare metal. Uh, we've got uh, a VM. Uh, we, we're going to use a CentOS image, and we're going to put it on our, our uh, tenant network. And uh, uh, just before we, we look at that, so uh, that's probably fairly small. But uh, you can see in here that here's the heat stack. We're launching a, a, a bare metal with flavor of bare metal. We're launching a normal VM. Uh, we're launching a, uh, we're creating a direct port in order to uh, use it for SRIOV. And then we're launching a, a, a TPDK VM. And we're setting different availability zones so that they go in onto the different uh, servers that are configured differently. So that's, uh, that's that excitement. And if we now go over and take a look at our compute instances, we'll see that we've got a bunch of stuff spinning up. Uh, we've got our normal and DPDK VMs that come up pretty much instantaneously. SRIOV takes just a little bit longer to uh, provision all of the bits. And bare, me bare metal, of course, takes longer. So switching over here to the Nuage VSP architect, you can see that you've got your two VMs. Uh, you've got your host interface. Uh, and you've got uh, another sort of blank port sitting here. And that's just waiting for the uh, Ironic instance to appear. And we can see over uh, the Ironic uh, uh, provisioning network over here uh, has the Ironic conductor attached and is busily provisioning the, uh, the, the VM, pixie booting it uh, and launching things. So while we're, while we're waiting, we can do a neutron port list. And we can see we've got actually five interfaces, including two with the same MAC address. That's because you've got your Dironic provisioning network. Uh, and you can see that uh, here's our unbound port at the moment. Uh, and we can see that uh, bare metal, I, I did speed it up. I didn't speed it up enough, I think. But uh, I, anyway, here, here we have uh, the bare metal uh, launched into the Ironic Python agent. Uh, and so it should be just about, uh, just about ready to come up. And uh, there it is. It's gone away from the Ironic conductor. Uh, and it should exist over here now. And there we are. So now we have all of our. Uh, uh, all of our interfaces plumbed into all of the uh, into the same network, and uh, here we're back on our uh, on our system. Uh, just me checking IP addresses. Uh, we can see that all of them are up. All of them are on the same network, and they've got nice consecutive IP addresses. So this is uh, this is certainly what we were attempting to accomplish. And uh, now uh, for the exciting high performance uh, uh, validation of uh, connectivity between the, these four instances, uh, I'm going to use ping because uh, uh, that is the traditional way uh, to validate things in OpenStack. Uh, per perhaps I, uh, I should have brought up some of the, the performance testing tools, but. Uh, Unfortunately, when I was recording this, I didn't have uh, uh, anything readily available. So uh, ping it is. Uh, so we, have, we are successfully pinging our uh, SRIOV instance, our uh, traditional VM, and our DPDK VM. But uh, they, are, they are all plumbed and, and all connected.
So, I switching back over to slides. I where does this get us to? I we've got oh I forgot something. Oops, my bad. Where did we get to? Yes, so going back over here, um, the key point with, uh, with all of this is uh, that you can actually put uh, uh, multiple different heterogeneous types uh, all in the same network, all in the same broadcast domain, uh, which allows you to do uh, networking that uh, uh, OpenStack doesn't necessarily uh, have ways of managing. I uh, lets you do uh, things like uh, protocols that are neither IP nor IPv6 uh, and, uh, and other things like that. So that's, the, that's one of the key use cases here. And uh, for NFE applications, that's important. So switching back again. So what does this do for us? Uh, it gets us our, our, our 10 gig per core with, with DPDK, uh, or better as, as DPDK continues to evolve and, and improve. It gets us uh, whatever our uh, bare metal and uh, associated NICs are capable of uh, doing with uh, uh, SRIOV, and uh, same thing with uh, bare metal except more so. so that gives you the flexibility of, uh, of moving all of this around. Uh, and because we're doing this with uh, top of rack switches, which are uh, VXLAN and VLAN capable and can also uh, do distributed routing as well as distributed switching, uh, that means that you can also uh, do uh, direct routing without having to go out to the uh, a big rotor at the edge of your data center, uh, much more efficient, no tromboning. Uh, we support this with our uh, new Aj 7850s. Uh, we're in the process of making this work with uh, a number of our uh, third party, uh, third party top of rack partners. Uh, and what that means is you can freely combine uh, hardware attached and software attached workloads. So that's a uh, that's where we are today. Uh, what, do we, uh, what do we need to do to uh, move this further forward? The, uh, the key points are uh, we need to align with uh, Ironic and Neutron as uh, uh, that evolves. And uh, uh, for those of you who were, were in the Ironic and Neutron session yesterday, I, I, there's some good progress on that. And it uh, looks like we'll be in good shape in, in Newton to uh, actually make this, this commonly available uh, without, uh, without any patches. Uh, the SRIOV changes to, uh, to Nova to clean up the way it's using port binding. Uh, we're planning on submitting those shortly. Um, and the VLAN aware VM uh, work is, uh, is really critical to bring this to the next level, which is uh, not just one VLAN or an untagged interface going to uh, uh, each, each of the workloads, but, uh, but multiple uh, associated with multiple networks in, in uh, Neutron. So that's where we are, and uh, that's where we're going. So thank you very much. I, and uh, I would be happy to take questions at this point. If you have a question, I, the uh, folks who are going to be watching this on uh, YouTube would appreciate it if you actually came up to the mic to ask your question rather than uh, uh, asking, from, uh, asking from the floor. So. You mentioned that uh, using VXLAN, you're uh, removing the network node from the path and achieving higher data throughput from yes. SRIOV uh, or bare metal provisioning, right? How are you overcoming the VXLAN hairpinning that 
gets introduced because the devices in a rack which do not have the default gateway on it needs to go back to its default gateway rack and then egress. So uh, the default gateway, at least, at least in, in our implementation, the default gateway actually lives uh, everywhere. So uh, the, the default gateway is resolved at the top of rack for each rack. So uh, obviously, if you're doing a bare metal or an SRIV workload, uh, uh, you need to go out of, uh, uh, out of the hypervisor. But you only need to go as far as the, as the top of rack. And then uh, if you have uh, another workload that is on another uh, hypervisor in the same rack, uh, it can get turned around, to, turned around immediately. So routing occurs in, in each top of rack. Uh, do you mind sharing the details on how we are doing that? Is that something proprietary to the implementation, or is that a, a industry standard? So I, there's some with the with the uh, new Arch seventy eight fifty. We're using a, a Broadcom Trident two, which inherently doesn't support this. Uh, but uh, there is some trickery that you can do uh, in order to make it work. Uh, and uh, we've had that working now for a couple of years now. I wasn't actually planning on talking about that because we've talked about that elsewhere. But uh, uh, if you're interested in more details, certainly swing by the Nokia booth or uh, come, to, come talk to me afterwards. And we're also working with uh, uh, some of our third-party switch vendors to, uh, uh, to help them do the same thing. Oh, thank you. Hi. How did you end up with the 10 gigabit per second per core in an environment we have multi-socket, multi-core, and hyper-threading enabled. Can you a little bit elaborate the, that number? How, how, do you, how did we end up in that number? That, that, that is, uh, so for, D, for DPDK, that, that is somewhat of an arbitrary number. Uh, you, you, can, uh, uh, you can make that number bigger or you can make that number smaller depending on, uh, yes, you've got uh, multiple sockets, you've got, uh, uh, you've got NUMA, you've got, uh, packet sizes, you've got what are you actually doing with the, with the traffic, but uh, at least in our, in our testing, uh, we see uh, uh, 10 gigabits per, uh, uh, per core is uh, uh, per, per core allocated to the uh, DPDK uh, on the hypervisor is, uh, is, a, is, a reasonable, uh, is a reasonable number. What, uh, <clears throat> what ML2 plugins do you have enabled in this demo? And if you do upstream your changes and they get accepted, what ML2 plugins do you expect to have or need enabled when the code gets upstream? So the plugins that are enabled in this demo, so I, I, first of all, this isn't necessarily, this doesn't necessarily require ML2. We did, we did in fact use ML2 uh, in order to use the uh, ML2 SRIOV driver. Um, and we are using uh, the Nuage ML2 driver. Uh, and uh, when I was alluding to uh, uh, add, adding, uh, adding information or adding things to Neutron, that was within the, uh, uh, the Nuage mechanism driver. So uh, in order to do this upstream, uh, you would need a uh, Another mechanism driver that is uh, uh, also able to, to manage the top of rack, and uh, a mechanism driver that is able to uh, handle your DPDK and uh, uh, traditional VM workloads. So, so depend so depending. So the parts of this that uh, I. There are parts of this that are generic that will make it easier for anybody to, uh, to do this, but you do still need um, a, a mechanism driver that supports it, and you need a mechanism driver that uh, can drive top of racks uh, that have the capabilities that, uh, that ours have, or something similar. 
but uh, there's there's nothing uh, there's nothing super magical about uh, uh, about that. We make it we make it much easier. Uh, one last question. Uh, you mentioned that you have the SRIOV workloads and then the ironic workloads, but uh, maybe I, I, I'm not so familiar with DPDK, but what aspect of SRIOV adds to the complexity? Because it just maps the, the NIC directly into the virtual machine to provide better throughput and yeah. those kinds of things. But is there, are there other complexities there? So other than, so for, for these purposes, ironic and SRIOV are very similar. But uh, the way the ironic driver uh, is written uh, makes it easier to, to do than the way the SRIOV driver is written. So uh, if we make some changes to the SRIOV driver, then uh, we can make it, make it equally easy. But no, there's nothing inherent to SRIOV itself that, uh, that's complex. Anything else? Oh, one more question. Uh, you said an ironic instance have two ports. One is a tenant network, and one is a ironic provider ten, oh, uh, ironic provider network. So these two ports actually connect to the same port of the TOR switch, or they connect to yeah. different. So, so the uh, uh, there are two logical ports in uh, in Neutron, yeah. one on each network, and basically. But physically, there is one port on the uh, bare metal instance, and there is one port on the top of rack, and there is there is one wire connecting them. But logically, you are uh, reconfiguring to move that that port between uh, the provisioning network to the tenant network. So, so at the moment, there is only one port which has one. Yeah, yeah. There's only, as as Vlad said, and he's the one who did most of the work on this. Uh, there is only one. There is only one port active at any given time. OK, OK, thank you. All right. So uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, on your way out, uh, if you don't rush past too quickly, uh, I'm told there are t-shirts available. Uh, as thank you for listening to me rather than falling asleep after, after lunch. So thank you.